We annually get estimates of population change at the state, at the county level, even at the community level. But the elements of that change, how our population changes, are important to understand so that we can get a handle on the context of change, the causes of change, and how we're changing relative to other communities. This is for the state of Iowa. This is a graph of the state's population going back to 1929 through 2012. And we can see that overall the state of Iowa has enjoyed an increase in population. We can see three times when the economy turned down. There was a minor dip during the Depression. There was a major dip during World War II. The reason there was a dip during World War II is because young men and women who were part of the war effort moved away from Iowa. They were either stationed in other states or they were stationed overseas. And so our state resident population went down. The state's population continued to increase until the early 1980s. And we went through a very serious economic industrial restructuring coupled with the farm debt crisis and the state's population actually contracted by 4.3 percent before beginning to recover around 1989. Thereafter the state of Iowa's population has continued to grow at a relatively consistent pace. We also look at population from a regional context. In this graph this is of the Midwest and one dot equals 10 people. A red dot is a decline, a blue dot is a gain. And we can see the areas of Illinois and Iowa and the rest of the states that are either growing or declining. For a state like Iowa, nearly all of the growth, nearly all of the growth is associated with metropolitan areas, core counties or the adjacent counties to the metropolitan areas of Iowa are the hosts of most of the growth that's occurring. There's a few exceptions, but most of the growth is occurring in metropolitan counties. Most of the most severe decline is occurring in many of the state's more rural counties as well as some of its micropolitan, its medium-sized manufacturing dependent cities. And we can see a generalized pattern of decline across much of the Midwest, much of western Illinois. The Plain states look more sparsely uh, dotted, but that's because they were originally more sparsely populated. Here's just the last few years. Again, one dot equals 10 people, and we can see that the general pattern from the last decade is, is still in effect. Growth in and around metropolitan areas declines among mostly rural types of counties. Well, there are elements of population change that we need to consider, and, and they're broken up into two parts, natural change and change due to migration. Now this may seem obvious to you, but no, we have, to care, we have to sort out the components of change so that we understand what's going on in a region. So natural change, well, first of all, that's births. And we count births by place of residence, not where you were born. It's the residence of your mother. Deaths similarly are counted by where you lived when you died, meaning your place of residence, not necessarily your place of death. So deaths and births are counted by the county, or the state, but by the county in which they, they occurred. Next we have migration, and there's two types of migration that we characterize when we understand population change and the elements of change. First is domestic migration. That is just simply somebody in the United States moving from one county to another. That's called domestic migration. Next, we have international migration, moving to or from the United States to or from another country. If somebody moved from a Texas county to an Iowa county to take a job in the meatpacking industry, that is a domestic migration, even if that person, even if that person is a migrant, say, from Mexico or Guatemala. That is a domestic move. If somebody moved, however, from Beijing to Ames, Iowa, to go to the Iowa State University, that would be considered an international migration. Similarly, 
if I decided to move to Germany to work for a few years, I would can be considered an international out migrant. Let's use Tama County, Iowa to illustrate the components of change. Tama County's population declined over the 2010 to 2012 period by 231 persons. Now, the 2012 figure is an estimate. The 2010 figure it was based on or benchmarked to the census that was conducted in 2010. Well, the first component of change, of course, is going to be births. That county realized 463 births during the 2010 to 2012 period. That county, in contrast, also realized 464 deaths. Well, natural change was the first component, and it is the sum of births minus the deaths. And in this case, this is a county that is technically in natural decline. There are more deaths than births. Now, that can change in a minor way from year to year, but this is a county that naturally is not growing. The next category is international migration. Well, the county realized 28 international in migrants. Now, I don't know where they came from, but this is the estimate of the number of persons who moved to Tama County who came from another country. In contrast, domestic migration counted 254 persons moved from Tama County to some other county in the United States. So, if we summed the net natural change and the summed the net migration change, we arrive at the total population change. This is what it looked like. One dot here is just 2.25 persons, and this is the annualized value of the change. This is just a way of characterizing the change. And here, right here, is Tama County. And we can see that the, the natural change, this is the natural change, births minus deaths, we can see that on an annualized basis, we have a large swath of Iowa, indeed much of the Midwest, Southern Illinois, Western Illinois, parts of South Central Missouri. These are areas that are realizing natural decline. Deaths exceed births. Here's areas in the Midwest where international migration is accumulating. Again, one dot equals 2.25 people. And we can see that most international migration is tightly aligned with metropolitan areas. Here's the Des Moines metropolitan area. Here's Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, the Twin Cities, Fargo, Sioux Falls, Kansas City, St. Louis, of course, Chicago you can see that most international migration flows to metropolitan areas and relatively little international migration occurs in the more rural areas of the United States or of the Midwest. Finally, and this is the most dramatic map of all, we do move, you and I, we move on average once every few years, especially when we're young. Well, domestic migration is very, very high you can see that the propensity to move from one county to another and to realize a net negative domestic migration exchange is very high across much of the Midwest. It's even very high in some metropolitan areas, like here in Sioux City. Here's Council Bluffs. Um, this area is uh, Waterloo, the Waterloo region of, of Iowa, Waterloo and Cedar Falls. Um, so you can see that we do have large areas where there is net negative domestic migration. Many people will characterize their population change and or their problems, um, especially over the last decade, as having something to do with international migration or undocumented migrants or those types of things. And many people will look at their population change and not understand what is the what is the foundation to their loss? It's not this. It is this. It is the high propensity of people in rural areas to move away. Now, the reason they move, of course, is to find better jobs, primarily, or to go to school, or for other reasons. But primarily, 
primarily the out migration is associated with seeking meaningful employment. So when we characterize our population and population change over time, there's much more going on than just the long-term trend. There are also the patterns of change that are associated with births, deaths, and the elements of migration, whether that migration is domestic or internationally based. 